I thought I'd take a few minutes just to go through some of the options in Google Earth uh, to show you not only what they mean, but also some that you may want to change to improve your performance or improve the way Google Earth looks visually. So if you go to Tools and Options, you get a whole bunch of options in here. You've got 10 or 12 here, and then five different tabs across the top. So we'll run through these real quick. Uh, texture colors is the colors, how many colors are used in the imagery textures. You won't notice a big difference visually or performance-wise with that, but the option's there. Anisotropic filtering uh, is, affects how things look from a distance at a tight angle. So out here where things are pretty flat and kind of mushy, that's because I have this turned off. Turning that on will smooth it out. Uh, it'll come at a performance cost too. Though. I'm on an older laptop right now uh, shooting this video, so I have it turned off just to help keep things running smooth. Uh, label and icon size I think is self-explanatory. Graphics mode uh, applies to Windows. Just two different ways Windows can handle the graphics. Changing that may make a big difference in performance, or it may make Google Earth crash completely. If you get stuck, you can always go to the Start menu, and under Start in Google Earth, there's actually a few options. You can start Google Earth, or you can start it in OpenGL mode, or start it in DirectX mode. And this is sort of a bailout. If you choose the wrong, wrong, wrong option here, or it's set incorrectly somehow, it'll let you get into Google Earth still without crashing, and then let you make changes in here. Uh, different ways to show latitude and longitude, depending on what you're most comfortable with. Uh, same with units of measurement. Uh, yeah, I, I just keep on system default, but some people prefer miles, some prefer kilometers. So your, your call there. Choosing the font you use obviously makes sense. Uh, terrain quality is an interesting one. The, the lower, or excuse me, the higher you make it, the terrain will get a little more subtle and a little more accurate, but it'll come at a pretty significant performance cost. So I tend to keep it turned down pretty low. Uh, the elevation exag exaggeration can help too. One, of course, means try to show it as accurately as possible, but in some cases, I think largely just because we don't have much perspective of living from the air, turning it to about one and a half or two seems to look more realistic to some folks, but you can play with that, but ultimately keeping it on one will be the most accurate. You can use the overview map in Google Earth, or some changes you can make to that, how big the map is itself, and where the zoom level on it starts. Uh, going up to the next option at the top of the cache is how much Google Earth holds in memory and on your hard disk. The larger they are, the more imagery you can store locally and should keep things moving a little bit faster. Um, of course, it takes up that much space in your memory and your hard drive as well. If you run into issues with weird imagery or broken 3D buildings or something, clearing both of these and restarting Google Earth often will help. Touring, the whole lot of options in here just largely related to tours, of course, but how quickly it'll go, uh, the angle it'll take when you create a tour out of the line, that sort of thing, you know, recording a tour how accurately it should, or how high quality it should record the sound and stuff. Um, navigation is similar. The fly to speed, um, even at this speed, is pretty fast. You can turn it up real fast. So when you click on something, you don't have to wait for the globe to slowly spin and move over, which is neat, but after a while, you may get tired of that. So you can adjust that. Same with the mouse speed. Uh, you, you can change the way the mouse behaves. Uh, this is one, this is fairly new, especially in, I believe, Google Earth 6. Whereas right, you start zooming in toward the Earth, it slowly starts to tilt. I personally don't care for that, so I tell it not to automatically tilt, but you can tell it to. Um, and I believe by default it actually automatically tilts and eventually enters ground level view, which is cool, but again, I personally don't like that, but I like that Google just gives you the option to do whatever you want there. And then finally is the general tab, with just a few other, other random things here. Um, you can kind of read through these. They're showing results in an external browser instead of a little slide in browser there. Um, this is kind of nice to handle all unrecognized data. This means instead of when you load an external KML file, if there's an error, instead of popping up an error, it'll just do its best to deal with it for you. Similar to bad code on a web page. A lot of web pages are coded poorly and technically have errors in them, but your browser just kind of does its best to hide that and give you what it should give you. Um, and if you're new to Google Earth, keeping the show tips on show startup tips is kind of nice. Every time you open Google Earth, it'll give you another little tip, a little tip about how to work with things there. So that's a quick overview of the options. Hopefully that gave you some idea of what you're looking at in here and maybe a few things that you want to change. Thanks.